If you're an incoming medical student and you haven't heard of Anki, you might be behind the ball there. So in this video, we're gonna go over what is Anki and how do you use it as a medical school student? Let's get right into it. What is up YouTube? For those of you guys that are new here, my name is Jason, now a second year med student at GW. And before we really can get into the video, please be sure to like and subscribe. It's how we get our channel to grow and we just hit 1000 subscribers and we're still only going up from here. So I need your guys' help to spread the word and have everyone join in on the whole journey of MD in the making. So let's jump right into the video here about what is Anki. For those of you guys that have just now found my YouTube channel, Anki is a way for me to study all of the material in med school. Uh, everyone has before thought that you need to take notes and you need to highlight those notes, rewrite those notes. And I'm here to tell you that no, I don't take a single note in med school at all whatsoever. No notes. And how am I able to do that? And that's because of Anki. So Anki in very simple terms is pretty much your basic note cards, but on steroids. That's about it. So Anki is a platform that allows you to create online note cards similar to others like Quizlet. Now the main difference between Anki and Quizlet is that Anki runs on a algorithm that enforces space repetition. Now you might be thinking, why do you need space repetition? That is because of the forgetting curve. So as you learn material, you forget it, and that's about it. But with space repetition, you space out the time that this curve drops, so that way it will drop, you'll see the card again, and you'll relearn it, and you'll jump right back up to remembering the information. And so that's really how it works. It is all run by the algorithm of the software that people have created, there are some very, very smart people that have created this and have been able to work on it with others. So with the space repetition, the more you know a card, the more you know the information, it spaces out further, but if you don't really remember the topic, the information, then it'll come back sooner. I'll go into the details of how I use it and kind of what the normal ways that most med students use it as well. But there are different types of ways that you can do it. There are either you make your own decks, you make your own cards, and now decks are just a collection of cards into a certain category, or you have pre-made decks which can be found online. Now the online versions, the main one that I use is On King. Um, the greatest thing that has been created, they've actually just come out with Anki Hub, which I will let them talk about it in the description down below. I'll provide links to all the pre-made decks I use and how to download the On King deck. All of these pre-made decks, especially the On King deck, prepares you for your board exams in medical school. It is pretty much using all these amazing third-party resources, whether it be Sketchy, Boards and Beyond, Pathoma, Pixarize, Visio, whatever you could think of that's a third-party resource for medical school. Someone else has created cards for it and compiled it all together into one deck, so you really don't have to do any of the work other than downloading the deck. So let's get right into the basics of Anki, um, and I'll show you guys what it kind of looks like for me. All right, so this is what my Anki looks like. It's gonna be a lot different for you guys when you first download it. That's mainly because I have a bunch of add-ons. I will leave a link down below on what add-ons I've added and the best way to go about it, but we can overall just talk about it here. So when you first open up your deck, it's gonna be a lot simpler than it is here. So the information here that I'm showing, add-on information here that I'm showing, add-on, all the stuff here that I'm showing, add-ons. So let's get into the basics. Let's go up into the settings or the preferences, um, and I'll show you guys kind of how I have it set up at the moment. This is your basics folder here. I haven't really touched anything here. I just leave it as is because the way that they have set it up is pretty much good to go. Uh, the main one that I've kind of focused on is scheduling. So here I have clicked to show re next review time above the answer buttons. I'll get into more of that later, but it pretty much says, how far out do you wanna see the card based on how well you know the information? So if you don't really know it, I wanna see it in an hour. But if I really know it, show me it in four days. I like to see how many cards I'm doing and how many are left in the review, so I have that checked, mainly because it allows me to kind of figure out how much to plan out on the day for Anki cards because a lot of other stuff kind of happens throughout the day. This one I've left on. Um, don't think it's necessary. I think it's mainly for Android users, but I've left it on in the meantime. Um, I like to mix in the new cards and the review cards together, so that way 
I have a combination of all this new information that I'm seeing as well as old stuff so that way it all intermixes and hopefully sticks in my brain better. And the last thing that I have is the four hours past midnight is the, when the new day starts. I like to do my Anki cards in the morning and because of that, I want it to have a restart on the new day early on. However, if you don't want to touch your Anki card until the evening, maybe change it to 12 hours past midnight so that way in the afternoon, that's when you have your new day. Um, and then we go to network again synchronizing everything this is just how you have it synced up to Anki web which really is the database so that way I can control on my computer my phone my iPad and my laptop all have Anki and they're all interconnected and then backups uh, just want to make sure that you leave backups so that way in case anything happens it's still there so those are the basic settings but let's say that you are starting off and let's kind of go through the basics of how do you create a new deck uh, we're just going to scroll down to the bottom here and as you guys can see create deck let's see new deck name let's just make it a personal deck now we have the personal deck listed here. All right, so let's go through how do you make a card to throw into your deck. All right, so let's make a new card. I like to first click into the deck that I'm working on. It says I have no cards, obviously, because I just made it. So let's go into add, and we're going to make a type of card. So let's start with your basic. Your basic is really just your basic flashcard. So let's come up with a question. Let's say, so let's ask a question, what bacteria causes rheumatic fever? So what bacteria causes rheumatic fever? The answer is your group A strep. That causes rheumatic fever. So once we will add that we'll just go down to the bottom and hit add and then it just disappears but it didn't actually disappear i'll show you guys where it went later so let's switch it and go into the next type of card which is the closed deletion card this one i use for all of my cards if i'm adding it and that's pretty much what most other people use so let's type in close so this one is slightly different in that you create a sentence instead of a question so group a strep causes rheumatic fever. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna hide the information that you want to be tested on. So, if you want to hide this, all you have to do is scroll up here and you'll see these brackets with three dots. You click that and it creates this parentheses around it, which hides it. However, there's a different way to do it and the way that I do it because it's a keyboard shortcut is you wanna highlight this, Command, Shift, and C, and it creates it again. So let's add this card in. And now we've added it, and again, it's disappeared. Not really. So let's close out of this. Let's sync up our cards now. And let's go back to decks. So it's changed now my deck name to default. This will occasionally happen to you. It just means that the new cards were added into the default or hidden folder. So with that, let's go through our card. So we'll hit this and we'll hit study now. Hit spacebar is what I typically do. So blank causes rheumatic fever. What is blank? You have to think about it. Hmm, it's group A strep. So we'll hit the spacebar to show our answer and say group A strep causes rheumatic fever. Now, if you guys saw my little highlight here and all this information came up, that was from an add-on. Again, I'll leave it down in the description below so you guys can add it yourselves. But how well did I really know this card? Now I have options. Did I really know it? Hmm, I might not really. So I'll see it again in an hour. Did I somewhat know it? Hmm, maybe. So then I'll see it in 12.5 hours. Now, did I feel pretty good about it? Yeah, I think so. And that is the good shortcut. And then too easy. That was such an easy card. I really should have just known that. I can hit the easy button. However, if you guys can see here, every time I highlight, there are keyboard shortcuts that you can have. So if I hit one, that will cause, that will pretend like I clicked this. Two here, three is this one, and four is that. However, if you kind of go through Anki a lot, you will know that spacebar is your best friend. So if you hit spacebar in this section, that is the same as hitting three. So I'll hit that and it'll go on to the next one. 
So this is your basic card here. So what bacteria causes rheumatic fever? And then, hmm, what is it? Oh, group A strep. All right, great. Now I really knew this card, so I'm just gonna hit four so I don't see it again for a few days. And then again, this is the second part of the closed deletion card that I made earlier. So with two closed deletions, it makes two cards. And how well do I know this? I knew this super well, we're good to go. So I'll hit four. So that's how you make your own cards, but I rarely, if ever, make my own cards in medical school. I use the pre-made decks. So a quick little shortcut for you guys, if you wanna jump back to the decks, all you have to hit is D on your keyboard and D will jump you back to the decks right away. But how do I add and incorporate new cards and how do I cover the material that I'm covering in school? to then show in the On King deck of amazing cards. Before we get there, let's talk about a little bit about the options and the way that I have my cards set up. So under the gear icon right next to On King, we'll hit that and we'll hit options. Now this gives us all the information of how we want it to be spaced out. I have my deck set at 500 new cards a day. Uh, the max reviews is 9999. This is the maximum that you can do. You can't go any higher than that. My learning steps are the steps that I take when I start seeing new cards. So if I don't really know the information, I put it at one hour. If I kind of, then it's one day. And that's how it initially starts. So the graduating interval is how much it's gonna space out based on the times that you've seen it. And your easy interval is if it's an easy card, how much more do you wanna add on to the gap? Again, the new cards I want to place in random order because if I felt like it was in a sequential order, then I'll just remember the overall spacing of information and not randomly assort it through different cards. Now the lapses I've left the same as my new card interval. Uh, the one thing that I have changed here is your leech threshold. So if you keep forgetting a card or you keep getting a card wrong, it will have it tag. I have it set so that way eight times is kind of the number. After, once it hits eight times that I don't remember the card, it will tag it only. Um, I have a timer on my cards to kind of make sure that I'm one doing the cards and paying attention because doing a lot of cards a day it's very easy to get distracted so I'm trying to push myself to get a card in every 60 seconds um, I have not touched the burying cards here the audio I have left alone and now this is what I have set up here in the advanced section. So in the advanced, the first one is a maximum interval. That's the amount of spacing that the cards can go to to a max. So I have it set at 180 days, which is six months. Because I have step coming up, I don't need to see cards in a year. It doesn't do me much good at that point. Um, the starting ease, easy bonus, interval modifier, hard interval, and new interval, I have not touched. Those were the ones that were preset for me. And so far my cards have been working well with that. Okay, so these are all the settings. You guys can copy them um, throughout the video, but let's go into how do I actually utilize the Onking deck itself. Now we're gonna go into the browse folder to really see what all the information is. You can either hit browse right here or you can hit B on your keyboard. So let's do B. And now we are actually in the default deck. Uh, these are the cards that we just made today. But how do we actually utilize Onking? It's not through going through the decks themselves. It is actually in going through the tags. Now everything here, as you guys can see, has a tag option. Um, so let's say we cover material on bacteria. So we're under step one material. So we'll open that up. And it opens up like this. But because we're learning bacteria, how do we learn all our bacteria? Using Sketchy. So we jump under Sketchy Micro for Microbacteria, and we'll go to Bacteria, open that one up, and Group A Strep is a gram-positive cocci. So we will open that, and we have Group A Strep or Strep Pyogenes here. So once we click on that, you guys can see that I have all these cards here that I have done. So they are yellow, meaning that they are suspended. They are not highlighted, meaning that I'm seeing the cards. So how do you jump between suspension and unsuspension? All you have to do is click on a card and hit Command J and that will unsuspend it. Now if you there's another card that you need to suspend, you just hit Command J again. So why did I choose to suspend or unsuspend these cards? 
I felt like either the information was, was not necessarily something that I thought was important or it was not covered in my classes and therefore and did not want to emphasize. So that's how you go through all of it. So when you first get it, you're going to have to suspend all your cards. So again, you'll go into your folder of deck. So again, look at all these cards that I have suspended. You're just going to hit command A, highlight all of them. It will take a while because there's over 31,000 cards and then you hit command J to, to suspend them all. So once all of those cards are suspended, then you go through to individual videos and topics that you've watched and unsuspend those cards accordingly. So that is everything on the information of that. So let's say that we go back into our default deck and let's say I want to suspend a card. So I'm gonna hit command J to suspend it and see it's highlighted and therefore I won't be seeing it. Now, if you go into the actual deck itself, while you're seeing a card, how do you suspend that? So let's exit out of this. Let's add a new card into our default tab. So we'll say how to suspend a card. And we'll say it's the at symbol, which is the answer for that. So all you have to do is we will add this card. Again, it won't let you add unless you have a closed deletion. So we'll highlight command shift C and now it has the closed deletion brackets around it. So now we can properly add it. So now it's added. Let's go back to our deck. So let's study this one. All right, how do you suspend a card? Oh, I don't actually need to see this. So we'll hit shift two, which is the at symbol. And then it, as you guys can see on the bottom, it says card suspended, which means that I will not be seeing that card anymore. And well, those are your main shortcuts. If you guys wanna see how I actually study. I also use the 8-bit do 02. Uh, this one is a amazing game pad that allows you to use this and reprogram all the buttons here for the different keyboard shortcuts. So instead of hitting one, two, three, and four for your different cards, I can hit the start button for enter one, two, three, four. I can use this toggle feature to scroll down. I can hit this button to sync up my cards. I can hit this button to go to the decks. So let's show you guys how I've set this thing up and how does it work. So all I'm gonna do is actually go up to the Carabiner Elements, which is the app that you need to use. So we're gonna open up the Carabiner Elements. This is the app that you need to use for your Mac. Um, that's just how I've seen on Reddit and how everyone else has described it. And so we'll go down into, first we gotta turn this bad boy on so that way it pops up here. So once this is on, you're gonna to go to clicking your devices. And now this is how I have it set up so you guys can play around with it. So the A button on here actually will press G if you don't have this set up. So instead of hitting G, I have it hit three. Um, you guys can just screenshot this and apply it to yourselves. I'll leave a link down in the description below for where you guys can buy this, as well as you guys can just take screenshots of this and have it set up for your own Anki use. But you guys, that is it. That is how you use Anki in medical school. If you guys have any questions, please leave it down in the comments below. I'll happily answer and help you go through whatever steps you need to properly set up your Anki card for your pre-made decks as well as school decks. But that's gonna be it. I'm gonna wrap up the video here. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Definitely, definitely, definitely has helped this channel grow and really can't do it without all of your help. So. Catch you guys in the next one as we embark on the journey of MD in the making. Peace.